And how many times do we have to see it to acknowledge the level of that violence, of that white supremacist violence? Academe is taking place every day for many of us as people of color, women of color in academe, but we're not even allowed to call it violence. What we hear are the same old tropes. She's so difficult. She's so angry. Well, you know, when white men told you you shouldn't wear that rag on your head, you know, they weren't being insulting. They were trying to nourish you. And you just didn't get it. So, the, I mean, I think these are really insane times around cognitive dissonance, around domination, of the many, many forms that white supremacy takes. Because one of the things that we don't talk about as black people, people of color, is the more money you have as a person of color, the more you can remove yourself from certain kinds of situations of violence. I mean, there's a reason why so many young black people are obsessed with wealth. Because they believe that wealth can take them out of the circumstance of danger. That they can finally be, quote, free if they have the money. And that's why I, I'm only going to make one Beyonce comment. When mm -hmm. <laughs> I ask people to consider if she had dreadlocks, if she had nappy hair, would she be on the cover of all our magazines? Is it about the fact that her very presence is propaganda for white supremacist aesthetics? <laughs> That's constantly saying, colonize yourself, black people. If you want to make more money, colonize yourself. There's a way, and we'll call it something else. We'll call it entertainment. We'll talk about how well you dance, how great your body is. But we won't talk about this obsession with blondness. Do you realize that hair salons are one of the most segregated soldiers? locations in our society, that all over the United States there are hair salons that specialize in nothing but dyeing hair blonde, because those of us who are old enough to remember that commercial, is it true blondes have more fun? Yes! In, 